Hello, chess fans. Welcome back to another Master Focus game recap. Today's match we have between Kovalev and Magnus. This is from the 2022 uh, World Rapid and Blitz Championship. This is in the Blitz portion. And Magnus shows up late to the game. Uh, in fact, he shows up so late to a three minute Blitz game that he only has 30 seconds left on the clock. No spoilers. Some of you already know the outcome of this game. For the rest of you, let's see what happens. Game starts off with an eventful E4, E6. Magnus strikes right away in the middle. We get a little bit of blood, trade off some pawns. Uh, Kovalev decides to develop the knight. It's typical. Magnus decides to develop the uh, bishop. Magnus doesn't care about this pawn push at all. Kovalev continues. I'm sure all of this is theory at the grandmaster level. Magnus, as you can see, it shows up to the match late. So this is playing very principled, uh, very basic chess. Nothing too risky. Uh, here he plays. Uh, computer calls this move a bit dubious. Uh, computer calls for the knight to come into the game. Obviously, human versus human. Probably nothing wrong with that move. You get tempo. You know, Kovalev has to react. He does react with the uh, bishop move, and now the knight finally comes into the game. Uh, here, uh, computer was calling for the bishop to slide in and protect this pawn, and you'll see why in just a moment. Instead, Kovalev plays a mistake computer calls this a mistake uh rookie one and now you see knight adds two attackers as this 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 rook is still staring down the middle of the board kovalev jumps into the middle magnus takes and uh now kovalev looking to apply pressure two pieces try to win this middle back Magnus simply protects with the pawn. Queen jumps in. Now, really fast, I just want to say something that I missed. Uh, right here, Kovalev took about a whole minute. This is move six. Kovalev took an entire minute on move six. Uh, maybe he's planning his next set of moves. I don't know what it is, but this definitely helped Magnus come back as far as the clock is concerned. You can see during the game, Magnus is looking around the room and you know kind of wondering what's taking so long anyway let's continue um the magnus slides in we get that a uh, little bit of pawn blood and then here move 13 um magnus is up four seconds on the clock uh, however, this is his first long think. This is where Magnus is doing some calculations. Obviously, there's some funky stuff going on here in the middle. Magnus is trying to figure it all out. Magnus chooses queen face off. After a little bit of a think, Kovalev plays this move, and then Magnus takes back the knight. Now, I ask myself, why not take back with the pawn? I, I, you know, I just was wondering why didn't pawn take back. So we'll go down this, this computer variation here, which makes sense. Uh, you, as you can see, the eval bar drops a bit on pawn takes and it continues with the queen swapping out, uh, developing moves here. Obviously, there's some double pawns, right? And the computer says, hey, you need to undouble those pawns. Well, create some space between the double pawns. Um, and the computer thinks this is better for white. And you know, at first glance, I couldn't see like why this is better for white after all this is said and done. But you, you know what you have to do is you have to do like a, a before and after. So the position, well, let me go back. I think the difference in his position is, is the fact that, um, you know, white has these, uh, double bishops and maybe at the you know obviously right now the, the eval bar is completely even um but i think at some point 
you know, uh, you don't have this better for white. But I think the only way you understand this is um, by looking at the position from before. And with knight takes, you you know, you cause this, obviously, you know, obviously here. Thank you. You can't do queen takes because the knight would take. You just do the upper piece at that point. So I think what they're saying here, or, or the way the position looks here is, this is a really good knight. So you have to get rid of it. And that gets rid of a bishop, which we know a bishop is valued a little bit more um, than, a, uh, than a knight. So I think the computer is basically saying, you know, put the knight here. There's no pawns that can kick it. Right? There's no pawns here that can kick the knight. So that knight is going to sit there in perpetuity until one of the minor pieces comes along and takes it out. And uh, with this being such a strong knight in the middle, you know, computers just says, well, Kovalev understands that you have to take it. You just got to get rid of that knight to the strong in the center of the board. Also, this knight here is blocking this pawn from ever moving. Also, this is a weak pawn. Um, so, yeah, I, so, you know, you can't see it from the other position. At least I can't see it from the other position why that position was better. But from here, it makes sense to plant that knight right in the middle of the board and force this trade. Unfortunately, you're now unleashing the beast. This rook is now open to come into this game. This is a dead rook for right now. So let's continue. We get some developing moves, kicking the knight out. Magnus chooses violence, remove that rook. Uh, obviously, there's some other moves he could have played, but maybe that's the most accurate good bishop takes and then now the rook gets activated coming in here the bishop protects and now we're here we're attacking the obviously we're attacking the knight uh and kovalev goes backwards a, a very unprogressive move the computer is basically saying look attack the rook with the pawn also giving you some clearance for the knight to come back into this square potentially i don't know but this is a bit regressive backwards um so the computer called you know kick the kick the rook out anyway let's continue he goes back uh magnus here plays uh, a mistake computer calls this a mistake computer is calling for uh pushing this pawn obviously you want to just take take up more space from your opponent anyway that doesn't happen uh now we're going to take up some space maybe plant this here maybe move this pawn and now magnus pushes that pawn and then he plays this move computer calls it dubious the computer wants h5 and and i think the reason why computer wants h5 is because white is planning to kick this bishop out and here it plays um a mistake rook rook d1 uh and as you can see it was calling for this f3 move to kick this uh white bishop out and that's why on the previous move you saw it wanted to play here to prevent any kicks you know you would just take takes takes and this bishop would control a lot of squares also um, with this pawn push at this move, you prevent the bishop from ever planting on the uh, very effective e4 square. This is this would be a nice little outpost. Throw on a nice long diagonal. Anyway, that doesn't happen. We get rook c4, and here Magnus misses a tactic. Obviously, bishop takes pawn. Pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, and then you win the bishop. So you go over pawn here. Magnus misses that, plays a what computer calls a blunder. Pawn takes, bishop takes. I think Magnus calculated all this, and he was just like, well, I'm just better than my opponent at this game. I'm better than Kovalev in end game. We're going to move into an end game, and... Um, I'm just going to win in the end game. He can't beat me in the end game. I think this is how Magnus is. He's just like, I'm not even going to think. Magnus is like, I'm not going to do this tactic. I'm not thinking at this point. I'm just going to force an end game. 
and dare him to try to beat me in the end game. That's I, I'm pretty sure that's what Magnus is thinking here. Anyway, we get the pawn push. Takes, takes, takes. He obviously has to protect that pawn. And then now Magnus enters uh, end game mode. Taking away space, we get some trades. King comes into the middle of the board. Knight comes in. Obviously dropping back here. Controlling these uh, knight squares. Now Magnus at this point taking up space and pinning pieces to this knight. Pinning pieces to this pawn. Just taking advantage of things here. Um, Wait, hold on. Is there anything instructional? No, no. Let's continue. Uh, so again, dropping back. Pinning this rook to this pawn. This is all very instructional end game here. Now, utilizing the open file, still keeping the pin on the on the pawn, the d4 pawn. The king drops over. Um, now he's looking to activate this bishop, uh, taking away space from the bishop, potentially bringing the knight into this square, and then Magnus plays this move. Obviously, there's a lot of squares here uh, to control. Uh, a bit of a jostling move here, loosening up the white position. And then now we get another space uh, move. Another move basically just takes away space, increasing space for black. Obviously, you can't push this pawn. Rook. King comes over, hoping to uh, protect the rook. And then again, Magnus just taking up more space. King comes in. We get the bishop check. Evolve bar goes back a bit. It doesn't matter. We're not going to dive into crazy computer variations. Bishop again taking up more space. We can't kick that. Pawn's pinned. King comes in. Kicks the rook out. No problem. King drops in. And then Magnus comes and attacks the uh, knight. Now here, computer is calling for Night check, keeping the game nice and even. But uh, Kovalev uses violence. Mistake, blunder, says the computer. And the reason why I think this is a blunder is because you have two disjointed pawns here. They're not working together. They're not coll collaborating at all in any sort of manner. And you just connected them. You just connected these pawns. Eval bar shoots up point, uh, 4.7 for black. He's a connected fast pawns. And again, this is Magnus saying, you're not going to beat me in the end. You're going to stake or blunder, and I'm going to win. Here he plays another dubious move. Um, computer's basically saying, look, these are, these are connected pawns. Do something about them. Attack them. Disjoint them. Get rid of them. <laughs> Make them do something. <laughs> uh, so he plays a dubious move. And then Magnus, understanding the power of these squares, obviously attacking this pawn. Well, computer says this is a mistake. Computer wanted B3. And we'll go, we're going to go down this variation because this is a very computer variation. And I think with ample amount of time, Magnus does find this move. King drops back. We come in. We add two uh, attackers to this pawn. We vacate, check, and then now, very, very instructional sacrifice move here. If you're a newbie, you wouldn't. This wouldn't make sense to you if you studied your end game. Then you know what this pawn is trying to do. It's basically trying to get this pawn to take, so we can get this pawn to queen, and then you just bring the king into the game, and then this check here is just a desperate move. At the end of the day, the king's going to come here, then here, and then you're going to push your pawn, and then queen. Uh, the king is completely cut off from participating because of the rook. So this rook is basically impotent. There's nothing he could do about this. This king is just going to come in, come here, push the pawn, and then you're going to have to sack the rook. The king takes, and now you have a rook end game. King and two pawns, and that's just losing white. So let's go back. Magnus doesn't see that, but he does see, you know, he's, 
I mean, it's different between 6.9 and 3.9. Magnus is like, this is still winning. It's a blitz game. I don't have time to think, but I know this is the right move. Just straight off intuition. Um, Rook comes down, check, wins his pawn, loses that pawn, but Magnus is going to win this pawn. King also attacking the Rook, attack the Rook. Now Magnus says, well, I have a pawn advantage over here. I want to trade out the Rooks so I can win this end game. Kovalev says, no, no, no. And some instructional play is coming up. Magnus creates opposition, understanding end game. Kovalev plays the dubious move. Uh, rook d6, king drops back, attacks the rook. Rook comes over to take that pawn. Magnus says, you can have that pawn. I'm going to take this pawn. And as you can see, we have some connected past pawns here. Uh, rook check, king comes in. Push that past pawn. Push it, baby. Push it. Push it. Keep these pawns connected. And then Kovalev plays this move, which, I don't know, maybe it's a desperate move. Maybe it's a long move. Let's see what the engine says. Engine says like, yeah, that's no engine wants the king move. That's what I thought. I, it, you'll see why this move doesn't make sense. But anyway, um, yeah, king move is better. He moves this and then Rook slides over. And it is on move 59 that Kovalev has resigned. And, uh, you know, for uh, guys that under don't understand this, basically, whoever gets behind the pawn is basically going to win. Uh, the game. Um, this is the queening square, right? This this right here is the queening square. You want to get this pawn to the queening square. However, you can't do that because the rook is on the queening square. This rook is attacking the pawn from behind. Remember I said whoever gets behind is going to win. And uh, it's just not going to be good for uh, white here. Uh, at some point, he might have to vacate. Uh, but at that point, it's time that he can't. King will walk in here some way, somehow. I don't know. Uh, and, and, and if you try the king walk this way, I'm going to push my pawn. And if king takes stake or blunder, however, the computer is going to decide that, and you get a queen. So that's just, it's just losing here for white. So Kovalev has resigned. Uh, I just showed you how the game would continue. Um, and that's that. Uh, good news is we got some amazing games coming up. Tata Steel Chess Tournament is coming. Uh, <laughs> that's tomorrow. Can't wait. Uh, we got Magnus, Ding, Loren, Fabiano, Carano. I love Fabi. Um, not really a fan of his style of play, more his personality. He just has a really cool personality. He's kind of chill, a little sarcastic at times. Anish Geary, Wesley So, uh, Rapport, um, Levon, uh, Eric Geisy, Kaimar, Ragna Anand, Rag is in this tournament, Von Forrest. There's going to be a nice, um, a nice field uh, coming up. This is going to be time control. It's going to be 100 minutes for 40 moves, followed by 50 minutes for 20 moves and 15 minutes for the rest of the game with a 30 second time increment from move one. So there's going to be some traditional chess. These games are going to last, you know, an hour or more. Some of them will draw really fast, uh, depending on, you know, whose strategy and how these things commence. Day one is going to be very exciting. Obviously, um, you know, Ding Loren is going to be playing in the championship against Jan uh, I think sometime in April. So we'll find out who the new champ is. Magnus won't be playing. He said he's vacating uh, the title or not playing. He's not interested, I guess. He wants uh, a challenge. Uh, so, yeah, uh, another great recap uh, for all my people who decide to uh, get a Master Focus uh, subscription. TryMasterFocus.com. This is our Noah Tropic, all natural Noah Tropic. Uh, to help you focus, concentrate, give you energy, energy boost, and mood. Uh, if you want to go that route and uh, become a client, I will reduce your subscription fee. All you have to do is uh, email us after you uh, sign up for a subscription. I would reduce your price to a drastically low, low price. I think it's at 62 bucks right now per month, and I will reduce it to like $49 bucks, uh, if you choose to do so. 
Um, that's at trimasterfocus.com. And I hope to see you folks again in the future. Didn't listen to me then. I bet they feel me now. Calm, don't let me lose it. The booth not about to prove it. I set goals and pursue it. You the best to never do it. That's my money talking fluent, stupid, ducking the Judas. It broke my heart, but over my eyes, you have no honor. I have no choice. Chasing the commas till I'm a goner. Been left for a minute. On my way home, mama, I promise, got caught up in it. Damn. Everybody eats when I'm batting at the plate. First, second, third, home, million dollar 